Hello, this is Jeff of Tell Flare Mouse. Today we have another installment of You Make It, We Mock It. This is where our viewers come up with creative designs and show off their fabricating skills, making some of the wildest 12 gauge projectiles ever imagined. It's a lot like rocketry where things can go right, but can also go wrong real fast, all at supersonic speeds. Today we have a brand new creator from Grants Pass, Oregon named Jay. Now it's quite obvious that Jay is blessed with some pretty amazing machining skills. The name of these slugs? the rods from God. Try to imagine how many hours he spent creating these 12 slugs for us. Ooh. Now the rods from God is kind of a science fiction concept where a space-based platform would launch giant darts made out of solid tungsten at ground targets and destroy it with just a lot of kinetic energy. Okay, let's take a closer look at the details of Jay's rods from God. Starting at the back, we have an aluminum base drilled to hold eight roll pins, also called spring dowel pins. Next, we have a support ring. This is actually quite important because since these will be spinning at about 30,000 RPM, without that support, the roll pins would just tear themselves out from centrifugal force. Next, we have a steel spreader cone. This is held in place with Loctite on the center shaft. Now upon impact, that spreader cone will be pushed back, causing the rods to spread out. And then finally, we have the central shaft or this pointed steel penetrator that extends the entire length of the projectile. And that is held on with a screw at the base. And in case you were counting, that is 13 individual parts for one slug. Now the weight of the projectiles are about 1.2 ounces or 34 grams. Now these slugs were kind of long, so I had to keep things kind of compact inside the three inch shell. I used 30 grains of long shot, an X12X gas seal, a cork wad, and surrounding the slug we'll be using a discarding sabo because I do not want those tempered steel roll pins gouging up my barrel. And again, we're using a three inch hole because our gun has a three inch chamber. We can't go any longer than that. Now, depending on how I load these things, I can either share some of the success if they work or bear all the blame if they don't. Now you can see here that you obviously wouldn't want to load a bunch of these into a tube magazine because that would lead to bad things. But enough of me talking, let's get out and test these things out. Welcome back guys. Um, today I'm Zach from United Ammo. This is my buddy Shane. He was out here sunbathing, so thought you know he'd have him shoot a little bit, and we're gonna shoot the rods from God. Uh, no, rods from God. Hot They're... rods of the gods. Uh, uh, we like... gotta get this straight. That's a whole other video. <laughs> oh, I think it went through. It, I saw it hit the dirt. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't eject that. No. Well, the recoil will do that. The inertia. Well, it's starting out really well. You can see one of the Sabos going across the screen right there. But look at the stability of that, and look at the accuracy right on target. And if we look carefully, we can see roll pins and rods and other debris coming out the back. It not only penetrated this military-grade Kevlar body armor, it did it effortlessly. And I gotta say, Zach did a fantastic job getting this on target. First time ever testing these things, and he just nailed it. First shot, super accurate. Right yeah, well, that was a great video, guys. We'll see you next time we put out one. And, <laughs> we gotta uh, quit while you're ahead. <laughs> quit while we're ahead, huh? No, no but suntan. like I said, pretty good target, and um, good that's age. what's left of our slug right now. Here, do you want to? Uh, yeah, that? yeah. Let me hold that up. This was the base. I don't know what happened there. Something flared out. Did not expect that. And what else did you find in there? And that's part of the tip. That little kind of collar that's around the points. Because you can see where those rods were going into it. Look too. at that. These are these are something else. I wasn't sure what these things would do. And that yeah. center just punched straight through the thing too. At least yeah, we had stuff coming out the back and hitting the dirt off in the back there. All right, guys. My name is Shane. We're shooting the rod of God at a uh, tin of sand with a uh, piece of Kevlar behind it. So let's see what happens. Yeah, it's about 10 inches thick. I think it's like a popcorn tin. It'll be interesting to see if we can penetrate that. Absolutely. All right. The rod of God going downrange. 
Okay, I'm ready. Now Shane did a great job. He never shot with us before. He's a new guy and hopefully he'll come out again. Now his shot landed a little bit high and right, but still good enough. Now almost everybody who has shot for me have almost zero shotgun bench rest shooting experience. So it takes a little practice. Your shot was, yeah, you're, you're still new, off. so we will forgive yeah. you there. It's a little up to the right here. But High and to the right. You're not from California, are you? No. <laughs> <laughs> I just sunbathed here, that's all. <laughs> but we ended up recovering the uh, the Sabo. No, that's not a Sabo. Oh, that? Damn it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's the core, the, the core center pin. That. Oh, here we go. So two of them. Okay, so it broke apart in the sand. So that's... Oh, here's another piece of... Uh, oh, okay. Fish. Okay, well, that's good. That's about it. Gotta get out of the sun, man, yeah. before we get skin cancer. Well, it's time to get the lead out. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> that was the only scripted moment you'll ever see on this channel. Yeah, I, I told him to say it. It's, it's, it's super corny. <laughs> the lead plate, ladies and gentlemen. Now these were loaded to travel around 1,450 feet per second. Now Zach's shot was a little bit high on this shot and bear in mind these are handmade projectiles and we will see some variations like this. But the shot was good enough to make a point. Yeah, it went up. It looked like my, um, well, my windage was fine, but it went straight up. Uh, they're still unpredictable slugs for the most we're part. We're still learning where the ballistics are, yeah. So the first shot was all skill, everything else after that's luck though, so you yeah. <laughs> um, Look at that though. It kind of caught that little ring, the, the base, the collar, all that stuff, but it definitely penetrated. It, we had a, that thing was on a pretty good slope too. Mm -hmm. We had a, we, it was not perpendicular, it was sloped back probably 30 degrees or something like that. And it carried a lot of energy through too. That here. core, and look at, we'll what's crazy, right yeah, you want to bring it closer? Yep, just bored right through there. Not even a straight shot, so it had to go through a lot more lead than mm -hmm. normal. And then the, the face of it, it the, we have the base, and you can see that the, the rods are doing something. It's gonna be very interesting when we, when we, if it does something like that in the gel. But uh, that's wild, and the center pin just is what went through the lead. That's crazy. What the heck? Yeah. Now, before we blame Shane, we can see that it's definitely not his fault. We can see the slug is uh, not very stable, and the spin is very weak on this one. So we essentially didn't have super tight engagement with the rifling, some, something we call Sabo slippage, and that's all on me, folks. Okay, I'm ready. There you go. I think that hit. <laughs> now we wanted to see what these would do to steel body armor. Now fortunately this one worked out really well. Uh, after Shane missed his shot, we thought maybe the red dot was knocked out of zero. We took a test shot with a foster slug. That's what that big silver smear is on the plate. Now despite our best efforts, that mild steel uh, penetrator pin just maybe left a little mark on the plate at best. No penetration at all. Now we have penetrated this with a viewer created slug before called the Kylon. It had a tungsten penetrator core and it is in the playlist so you need to check that out if you haven't seen it yet. Alright we got a uh, can of expired. They were uh, best by March 2020 here so we're gonna give these chili beans a try. This is gonna be a uh, my redemption shot, guys. Is, is it me or is it the round? <laughs> or the red dot or my the way I loaded them. I, right. I, I, I got to share some of the blame here, you know? Roll that beautiful bean footage. I think you hit it. I think we did something. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. Okay. Just a tremendous amount of energy transfer to this 
big can of beans. Look at the lid there. We can see there's a couple shrapnel wounds from the rods that penetrated that. And then if we look at the can afterwards, we can see that there's uh, more shrapnel wounds at the back and probably in the bottom too. Now we went into this not knowing what these rounds would do, but so far we're pretty impressed with them. He gets the height over his board thing right. Okay, you ready? Yep. Hit it. Excellent. I heard it. Now, even though this looks like a very impressive gel shot, uh, Murphy struck again, and what happened here is uh, the slug actually hit the block sideways. Now, at that point, the block was so mangled up, we opted not to take another shot on the block. And this, again, is why I liken this to rocketry. If something can go wrong, it will go wrong. And like I said, the block was just too mangled up to shoot again. It would look like garbage. So fortunately, the next day, we loaded up our last round and took another gel shot. So watch that at the end of the video, and you will be impressed, because I certainly was. Now, our next target was generously supplied by the folks at Clear Ballistics. And this target is called the Loaded Can Bust. Now, Claire Blissics reached out to me, sent me an email, say, hey, you want some targets to shoot? And I said, heck, yeah. Now, very few companies actually do that. The big guys, just, they don't care. The small companies, those are the guys that we support, and we really appreciate their generosity so we can share it with you, the viewers. And be sure to check out their website because they do have a lot of cool targets that are still very affordable. I'm going to be aiming for the right eye, uh, bottom lens, okay. bottom of the lens, kind of. Our right. Yeah. Okay. His left, our right. Okay, gotcha. All right. Don't confuse me like that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there is something in there. Woo! Chain shot landed exactly where he was aiming. See, he's getting better already. Now, the rods from God did so much damage to this head that when we went to put it back in the box, it basically just fell apart. And honestly, I was hoping to get a few shots on this thing and get a few videos out of it before we retired it. And just a reminder, if you're enjoying this presentation, please give it a thumbs up and leave some comments because we enjoy reading them. And Clear Ballistics is having a sale for Memorial Day. Uh, see if you could scan that code there. May 24th to 29th. And you can see some of the other stuff that they sell there. And that's just some of it. It's They got cool stuff. Let's see how it does. I'm ready when you are. All right. And I'm, and I'm, a little. And I'm aiming at the lower regions, we'll call it. Nether regions. Okay, gotcha. You hit something solid. I saw some fluff come out. Now that's a pretty decent accuracy for 40 yards. Usually you have to, you know, take a shot, then make some adjustments and walk it in until you find that sweet spot. And then we could see what looks like the, at least part of the slug still spinning after passing through that thing. Now since that dummy is more or less filled with foam, I don't expect to see any impressive damage on that. Where, where were you aiming? Uh, right at the head. Okay. So, um... Uh, I mean, not bad. It went a little high into the left, the typical California shot, you know. But yeah, yeah. All in all, though, I mean, it's not a bad shot, but... Yeah, this is where it gets crazy. Emphasis on but. Look what that thing did. The exit wound was uh, a little intense, but you can actually see where... I don't bring it up right now, but... No, no, leave it there. Quit moving. <laughs> you're, you're good. Okay, that's perfect. You can see actually where those little um, roll pins... I'm calling them roll pins still. They went straight through, they opened up. I mean, I don't think you could have got a better shot, a better slug. Yeah, up. I didn't expect it to do that on a dressmaker dummy like that. It's just full of some kind of foam or something. That's crazy. There's eight little stars that expanded out. 
man, why didn't our gel shot work out right, you know? Right. Gosh, at least we had finally got something that was kind of cool there, unexpected. Right. Yeah, I just thought we'd just have a, a, a simple hole through there. Mm -hmm. Now, I was so bothered that we didn't get a good, clean gel shot that I talked Shane into coming back out to help me film one shot. And this time, we have a brand new block of gel. And we couldn't have done this had uh, Clear Ballistic not sent us that block of gel this week. So they came through. Shane came through. And if we hadn't done this, I would have been inundated with angry comments about how I absolutely blew it by not getting a good gel block shot. Now, I dropped the powder charge by about one grain. I did some other things, used some different Sabos, and uh, let's see if we get it right this time. Okay. Nailed it. That was good. That was fantastic. Now that's what I'm talking about. I'm sure glad we went back out there and, and got that shot. Now without this shot, we never would have really gotten a good appreciation for these rounds. These things are just downright terrifying. Let's break it down even more. Now the center pin made it all the way through the gel, no surprise there, but the rods, they acted like little flechettes and the gel block really didn't even slow them down. I'm not sure if you noticed the one rod going through the doll's leg and leaving a little smoke trail behind it. Now people often ask me, what's the most brutal round you guys ever shot? And I don't know, I mean, this might just be it. Now I couldn't even begin to imagine how long these took to make each one. And I doubt they'd be cost effective to manufacture these things and sell them. These would be a great round for wild boar, bear, of course and probably even Cape Buffalo. There's no stopping these things. But yeah, so, this is the shot we took. This is what we recovered, the core. Still has the collar, still has the base on it. Uh, looks like we have a couple of roll pins. We have one that shot out to the side and stuck in, and uh, yeah, it's in there pretty good. Yeah, this is a ballistic paneling. It's ready to stop uh, up to like 44 Magnum, and that roll pin just really dug its way into there. Yeah, it looks like there, we'll might. probably find more because uh, we had eight roll pins just shooting out in all those directions. Yeah, it's hard to see this uh, screen here. And but, we also got this guy right here that came flying Yeah, it pulled here. a big blob of, of gel out with it and we didn't catch it in our Kevlar, luckily. Uh, actually, everything was sitting right here <laughs> It together. was sitting right there. It was, <laughs> it was amazing. Perfect, perfect uh, retake. I didn't want to come out here and reshoot this today, but I knew it was going to be, uh, I'd be kicking myself and reading all the comments about how angry people were that we didn't get a good clean gel shot to show what these things actually do. Absolutely. And it would have been a misjust, is that the right word? Yes, misjustice. Misjustice to uh, Jay to not get the best sh shots we could possibly get. Well, thank you again for coming out and helping me. Oh, absolutely. And uh, I'll get back to uh, Sunday then. Yeah, and, and <laughs> you, you, you sounded like you want to come out again, so that's yeah. promising. You, you weren't absolutely. too bored or nothing like that. Uh, so I appreciate any help hey, I can get. Anytime, I'm happy to come out and help you out. Yeah, that's great. All right, thanks, everybody. Give it a thumbs up or thumbs down if you want. <laughs> um, don't let, I'm, I'm not going to tell you what to do. <laughs> Thanks. Give it a thumbs up. <laughs>